In this video we will talk about the spread of epidemics on networks. We start by describing a simple disease model that does not use a network structure. This susceptible infected model can be explained by a single differential equation. We then adapt that model by partitioning the vertices according to degree. This gives us a set of simultaneous differential equations that evolve together to model the spread of the disease on a network. And once we have the model, we can explore how network structure impacts how the disease spreads. In the susceptible infected model, or SI model for short, every person is either susceptible or infected. A susceptible person is vulnerable to infection. An infected person has the disease and is also contagious. In this model, once you are infected, you remain infected forever. One can extend the SI model to an SIR model where people move from infected to recovered, but we will not cover that extension here. We use I to denote the fraction of the population that is infected, and we use S to denote the fraction of the population that is susceptible. And note that since you are either infected or susceptible, we have that S is equal to one minus I. The centerpiece of this model is that the infection spreads by interactions between infected people and susceptible people. And so the rate of change in I, the fraction of people who are infected, is proportional to I times S. We multiply this product by a constant that captures our rate of transmission. And there are two factors that go into this rate. The average degree captures the number of encounters in a time step. And the constant beta is the likelihood of transmission during such an encounter. This differential equation is known as the logistic equation, and its solution is well known. This solution is called the logistic function. Its formula is 1 over 1 plus some constant times e to the minus ct. The constant a is determined by the initial number of infected people, and the constant c is just our transmission rate, beta times the average degree. A plot of the logistic function has a characteristic s shape. The infection starts slowly, but when enough people are infected, we experience exponential growth in the disease outbreak. This rate tapers off after most people are already infected. Eventually, everyone does become infected by the disease. So now let's adapt this model to be aware of the vertex degrees. In the previous model, we used the average degree as a stand-in for every vertex. Now we will split the population according to degree. We let I sub K denote the fraction of degree K vertices that are infected. So I sub K is some number between zero and one. We get the total fraction of infected vertices by taking the weighted sum of the i sub k's. We multiply p sub k times i sub k to get the fraction of population that is infected and has degree k. Next we introduce a function theta to represent the fraction of neighbors of a susceptible vertex that are infected. We will make the simplifying assumption that theta is independent of the degree of the vertex. Let's defer talking about the actual formula for theta for the moment. We'll return to that later. For now, the important thing to note is that if V has degree K, then the number of infected neighbors that it has is theta times K. And that 1 minus I sub K is the number of degree K vertices that are susceptible. To get the change in the number of infected degree K vertices, we multiply the product of these two by beta, the likelihood of transmission. Here is what the SI model would look like on a power law graph generated using preferential attachment. This infection starts at a single vertex of degree 1. Then it spreads to its neighbor, which has higher degree. The infection then spreads to some of its neighbors, including a hub vertex. At that point, the rate of infection increases because this hub vertex has so many neighbors. By the next step, over half the vertices are infected, and the epidemic continues. So let's focus our attention to the differential equations of this model. We now need to talk about the function theta, which measures the fraction of neighbors that are infected. In today's activity, you will show that during the early stages of the infection, we can approximate theta using an exponential function. In particular, you will show that the growth rate constant A is given by the following formula. We multiply beta, the likelihood of transmission, by a fraction whose numerator is the difference between the expected value of the square of the degree and the expected degree, and whose denominator is the expected degree. Using this formula, we can now explore the consequences of running an epidemic on an Erdős-Rényi random graph and on a power law graph. In particular, 
it will be useful for us to define a new constant, tau, as equal to 1 over a. We call tau the characteristic time of the infection. Tau measures how quickly the disease spreads through the population. And when you look at an erdos renyi random graph, the spread matches the simplified model where we treat all the vertices as if they have the same degree. But something remarkable happens on a natural power law network. The variance of our distribution increases without bound while the average degree is constant. As a consequence, the characteristic time tau converges to zero, and this means that for large networks adhering to a natural power law, the infection erupts into a full epidemic almost instantly. The hub vertices are so good at spreading the disease it takes over the majority of the network in the blink of an eye. This certainly has implications for the real world. For example, the hub design of airports becomes a major vulnerability in a pandemic. And it is also important to vaccinate and equip high contact persons like doctors and nurses before the general population in order to mitigate a super spreader event. We've taken a quick tour of the susceptible infected model on networks. Modeling the spread of disease on networks is actually a very difficult problem. And obviously this is one of the most important applications of network dynamics in our current times. Today we saw the peril that power law networks create when the viral spread we're talking about is a deadly disease the network's greatest strengths become its greatest vulnerabilities. This is an important insight that is revealed when we move away from a simplified disease model to a model that is network aware.